All right, this video tutorial will walk you through some practice and you really do need to practice um, for assignment number six before you dig into that assignment because there's quite a bit to understand. Um, the topic is selections and how you make selections in pictures and, and, and work through it that way. Um, and so again, as with any tutorial, you can pause it then practice if it goes too fast for you um, rewind it whatever you want um, to help yourself learn how to do this um, so this is all about selections um, and how to work with different selections tools and how to fine tune the edges of a selection so they're not so jagged or things like that um, and so what you're going to do is open from your practice folder the building which is number 12. Number 12, the building that says neon, stuff like that on it. And then you just open it up. Okay. And so that's the first thing you want to do. So we want to select from this picture just part of this building over here. So to do that, you're going to come over and use this rectangular marquee tool. It just helps you to make a selection in the shape of a rectangle. If you right click that, there are other ways to make uh, selections. Maybe you need a circle, whatever you want. Um, for us, the best thing is the rectangular marquee tool. And so if you come over here to this building, um, you're just simply going to start in the upper uh, left corner of the building and to the best that you can in it, just get past the word neon. You don't want to necessarily get into the letter H. And then just come down here to right above the curb of the building and let up on your cursor. And as easy as that is, that is how you make a selection. Now, here comes the interesting part of the project. Let's say that you, you changed your mind and you want to add not only just a selection of the word neon, but you also want to include the letter H into the into that selection and without starting over okay so that's always the thing once you select the marquee tool if you come up here to your options bar they are four buttons right here that will help you um, really master doing selections um, the first one is just i want to make a new selection so you click it and you draw and you'll get a new selection. It's the second and third one that become pretty powerful. The second one says add to selection. So what that means is I already have something selected. I want to add to it. So if I click it and I come down before I even start, you notice how my plus sign has an additional plus sign attached to it. Now, if this doesn't work for you right away, stop the video, rewind it, try it again. Um, when I make this next selection, I want a little bit of an overlap um, with what I previously did. If I don't overlap them a little bit, then this adding to the selection does not work. So if I overlap that just a little bit, and I notice I didn't quite get high enough, I'm practicing, so I'm okay with that. So you can see though on the left, I have a little bit of an overlap, and then I try to come down here to where I was with the other one. Whoops, too much, gotta get it off the, the letter O. There we go, and when I let up, computer will uh, program will think for just a moment and it changed my rectangular marquee to include now the letter h okay and so again that's this button up here if you want to add to the selection so just try it again we're on add selection overlap it a little bit and go ahead and take the entire building when you get all the way over to the edge you'll notice that pink purple line that means you've maxed it out if i went down here i would see it down there as well i don't want the curb of the of the parking lot I just want to go to the edge of the building and if I overlapped it just a tad it will do with a little thinking and it gave me a perfect selection just like that okay now the third button up here is exactly the opposite it's the subtract the selection okay so if I click that one and I decide okay I don't want the word neon in this at all then what I do and you'll notice my cursor is now a plus with a minus sign on it when I draw across the word neon and let's even stop down here let's see what happens if we just kind of make something just the word neon will it actually work and there you have it so that is how you get rid of selections and how you add selections and then this is just simply how you start all over okay now go ahead and click new selection and if you just make a box around this whole thing 
then you have a, a brand new selection and you don't have to add to it or anything like that. All right. So once you have a selection made, going back to the previous assignment, um, how do you adjust the image quality? You can come right in here and you can adjust it how you want to. So when we did assignment five, we adjusted the image quality of the entire picture. With being able to make selections, you can now just select certain parts of your picture and adjust the image quality of that. Now, another really powerful tool that you can use um, is the inverse selection. Let's say that you wanted to select um, everything on this picture except the building. So let's do Command D and lose our selection. So we want to select the sky, we want to select this area over here, and we want to select this little bit of the parking lot and the curb down here. Now, we could go ahead and select and add and select and add, or a nifty little tool to use is we're going to select the building again, no curb, no parking lot, and we're going to come up to the select menu and we're going to choose inverse. And so now what happened, you can see that dotted line is no longer here. Just the area outside of what we selected, we inversed the selection. And again, just like with anything else, if you wanted to, you could go in and adjust the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and or anything else and make it look like it's really darker out than it actually was. And you see then that adjustment only affected that part of the picture. Okay, so that is how you kind of get started with selections and understanding the adding and subtracting up here. The adding and subtracting works with any of your selection tools. And so always look for those things up there and you should be good to go. Again, and before we move on to another type of a um, selection tool, anytime you get these marching ants and you don't want them anymore, there's a variety of ways to get rid of them. I just clicked out here onto the margin area and that got rid of them. Um, I could do command D that would get rid of them. So what in whatever fashion you want to get rid of them, that would be fine. All right, let's close this file up. Do not save it. Just kind of practicing. And then would you open up your file um, called jacket? Well, I'm not sure of the number of it. There it is. Number 13 jacket selection. All right. This is really, really a cool way to um, make selections. And also, you know, in Photoshop, we need to up the ante here and clean up the edges a little bit more. So if you come over here, one, two, three, four tools down um, and you right click, there's quite a few different tools in here. We're going to use the object selection tool. Okay. And again, I don't need you to click on anything, but there are those add and subtract right up there for that one as well. So let's say that you want to select the jacket on this mannequin, um, the left side and the right side of it, but you don't want the mannequin itself. So if you use this object select tool, it finds and automatically selects an object inside a defined region. What it actually does, and I'm going to purposefully kind of not um, try to include everything, I'm going to start, see, I should probably start higher to get that area. I'm going to start a little bit lower. And if I draw my box to select the area, you'll notice up at the top, I missed part of it, right? Okay. So watch what happens and you try this. Okay. It, what it did is it found similar pixels and said, oh, I bet you missed these. And look at that. It included it in my selection. So what it does is it, it, it's kind of a smart, very intuitive tool, but you'll notice that it did miss part of it, like right here around the edges and stuff like that. And you'll notice over here, it missed quite a bit. Um, I missed some over here. So it's never a perfect selection, but we want to make it perfect. And, and, and the expectation is that you make it perfect. Okay. So once you kind of get a rough selection of your object, up here on the options bar, you're going to click what's called select and mask. Okay. Now when I click it, my screen may not look like yours. You go ahead and click yours. I'm going to click mine. Mine automatically turns into this pink color. If yours doesn't have this pink red color on it over here in the properties panel where it says view, 
hit this drop down for the in the view mode and change it to overlay okay now you should have pink okay then you'll also notice you just don't you only have seven tools okay and you are in a completely different workspace now the best way that this is going to work is if you really really get into the zooming that is actually going on okay so what we have going on over here in the zoom okay and you choose to zoom how you want if i look right here and i zoom in you can see that there's part of this jacket that i'm missing there's a little piece right here in this whole area up here what i need to do is i need to get that red off of there because what the red indicates is the part of the picture i don't want Okay, so if I want to take red out of my picture and come up to this brush tool over here and I click on the, the plus sign and it says that it will add to the selection. So if I start pushing over the top of that with my cursor, it's like a paintbrush. I'm getting rid of the red. Now, there is like a size button up here. So if you're in a big area, you definitely want to change the size of your brush. Um, you can adjust that if you need to. And, and, and zooming in, like I said, I am just on the edge of this up here, but I bet if I zoomed in, I would actually see that I'm actually missing part of it. I know I am right there. I can tell there's a little piece. But what you do is you just start painting across that area, you have to be careful when you get to the edges because you don't want to get yourself out too far. So let's, let's watch this. So let's say, oops, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I did not mean to do that. Okay. So then what you do is you come up here to the minus sign and you click that. And then that, when you brush it, will put the red back in. Now, I understand you could have used the undo command, but sometimes the undo command is not going to help you. And again, if I were trying to do this for my assignment, I would definitely zoom in even more. Okay, so the plus sign will take the red away and the minus sign up there will put it back. So then what you have to do is you just kind of go around the entire area of your picture. See, I got to get rid of red up there. I got a little red over there. Look, I got to get the red off of this area. So you just continue to go around your picture and you fine tune it, okay? When you get that done, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out, okay? I'm just going to click my zoom button. Then I click fit to screen, okay? And then over here in your properties panel, you have to go way down to the bottom. You should have a section called output settings. If it's not open, open it up. And here where the output to menu is, you need to make sure it's on selection. Then you click OK. That'll take you back to your original workspace. And all the little dotted lines will have moved according to where you added and in, in, yeah, put, you know, move the dotted line with that plus and that minus taking and adding red. Yeah, see, I didn't do the best, but for practice, I, I, I'm i doing okay, okay? If I wanna go back in there, I just click select and mask. Now, what's the power of this? Well, once you have this selected, if you want to adjust just the image of this part of the picture, then you come back up here and you go, okay, what can I do with this one? And maybe you wanna make it much more light or you want to make it way darker for whatever kind of effect that you actually want to create. And again, to deselect command D or click off to the frame. Once you do that, and you can see that, that it did not, I did not do well, um, but it's like it really just changed the complete look of the jacket. Okay. And from here you can save it as a JPEG and do whatever else that you want to do with it. Okay. That takes care of this practice a lot before you start working on your assignment.